Now, once we have the Lewis structure determined, we know what the shape is, we have other methods of drawing organic chemical structures. So they're alternatives to your standard Lewis structures. And one of the reasons why we have created these other methods of drawing these organic molecules is because we draw them a lot and we want a faster way to draw them sometimes. So let's take a look over here at the first one. So the first one is called a partially condensed structure. So in here, partially condensed structures, bonds between the carbons and the hydrogens are not drawn out. So in other words, we're not gonna draw out these H's here. We're gonna emit those bonds. So CH3, that's what this guy is here, right? That's gonna be connected to a CH2. Another CH2, so that's one CH2, two CH2. Here's the third group. That third group is a CH3. So the bonds between carbons and bonds to other atoms are still explicitly shown. So that's one way. And then what we can do is we can condense this even further into something called the fully condensed structure. Now the fully condensed structure is all bonds and um, lines are omitted. So all the lines are omitted in the structure. So this structure here is the same thing as we wrote up above, but now we're going to lose these three bonds. So it simply would be CH3, CH2, CH2, and CH3. Now that still requires um, a, a bunch of writing out. And if you had a really big structure, Right? Can you imagine, like, just to, just to flip back, look at these structures from our first lecture here. Right? Drawing these in some type of a condensed format is going to be really hard. Now, when you look at these structures, you'll notice that, that there's not a lot of carbon atoms that are drawn out here. And that leads us to this next section, which is um, bond line structures. So in our bond line structures, the atoms that are carbons and H's are generally going to be left out. So instead, what we do, we have to indicate their position. And we do that by changing the angle, by drawing bends. So bends represent the carbon atoms. They're assumed to be bonded to enough hydrogens to complete their octet, unless there's some type of a formal charge associated with it. Now, the advantage of doing it that way is that when you look up above here, and you look at this structure for a fully condensed structure, this becomes a little bit more confusing, right? Of course, in the first structure that we drew here, it was pretty straightforward because you know that that's connected to this and this and this, and it's in a straight line. But here you have this CH32 group, so you have to kind of determine what's happening there. And you have this OH group here where you need to determine where that's going to be pointing. So kind of drawing that out, Let's just practice that, and then we'll go through and do the bond line. So this would be a CH3 connected to a CH2. So we just did that. That's next connected to a carbon. That carbon is connected to one, two CH3s. We're next connected to this carbon here. It's connected to an H and an OH and a CH3. Now you get better at doing this over time, but still you can see that there's some vagueness associated with uh, this. You, you have to think about it. Now in the bond line structure, we're going to have to think about things too. So the way that we would handle drawing out this four carbon molecule is, is we, can't, we can't just draw a straight line because we don't know if there's one carbon or two carbons or three carbons or five carbons. So what we need to do is we need to bend it. So one, two, three, four, there's four carbon atoms here. So at each bend, there's a carbon. And at each end, there's a carbon. So bends and ends, right? Those are the two areas that we're looking at here. So our bends and our ends. Now, if we took the structure and drew out the C's and the H's, this is the easiest way to do it. So carbon, 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 right? Remember, each bend in the end has a C. Now, we just need to put H's on here so that we get 
an octet. So an octet means we need four bonds to carbon. So this carbon here, it already has bonds to two. So we'll put two more H's here. That has a bond to both carbons. So we just need two more. And then down here at the end, just like the other side, we need one, two, three. All right, so we end up having a complete octet everywhere. Now, sometimes this might not be true, and that can be caused by having something called formal charges, and we'll, we'll talk about those and how to deal with those in, in our line structures here on the next page. So let's practice. Let's see what we can do with these structures. So we have partially condensed structure here, so let's take a look at the first one. So this is ethanol. Here's your fully condensed. So what's the line structure of this look like? Well, it's a carbon connected to a carbon. So that, in essence, is a CH3CH3. But we're connected over here to an OH. So we need to draw that out. So we're going to put a bend, and we're going to write an OH right there. So we remember, we need this bend to indicate that there's a carbon atom right there. So if we just wrote this, then there's actually only one carbon here. And that right there is connected to an oxygen. So this would be CH3OH, okay? So moving on down here, let's take a look at this next structure. So how would we do this? Well, let's look at it. We have one, two, three carbons. So three carbons is gonna be like a, a mountain here. And then off this central carbon right here, which is this fellow, we have a CH3. So we draw a line up just like that. All right, so hopefully you see in the, the pattern there. And then this next one here, we have another molecule with an OH group. These are called alcohols. This has one, two, three, four carbons. So we need to do that same kind of bin like we did up above there. And then off of carbon number two, if we're numbering from the left, this position here, that is an OH group, and we put that in just like so. And then if we want to make all those oxygens totally happy, we put in lone pairs here. So we put them in over there too. Now sometimes in OCHEM we, we omit um, lone pairs, and uh, you, you know that they're there because there's no formal charge written on this molecule. Okay, so guys, we're in a lot of practice with this as we go through the rest of this chapter. Well, let's practice doing some more line structures. And the other thing we need to talk about is this classification of carbon atoms. Um, and then we'll look at something called constitutional um, isomers. So there's a classification system that we can use here. So here we have the number of carbon atoms directly attached to us. So if you're just a carbon atom, and you have basically H's all around us, we would call that a methyl. All right. So if we have a carbon, here's a CH3 connected to one more carbon atom. So let's do this. This is the carbon atom that we're looking at for analysis, and that's connected over here to one more carbon atom. So because of that, we call this a primary. So one extra carbon, you get a primary. And we abbreviate that with a one in this superscript, kind of a knot up there. Well, secondary just has a carbon. So here's our carbon that we're kind of considering. And it's connected to two carbons. So we have a carbon over here and a carbon over there. Okay, so those could be CH3s. They could be, that could be a CH2 and an, and you know, an OH, doesn't really matter. And then, of course, down here you'd have two hydrogens. So because we're connected to this carbon and that carbon, we call it secondary. And then tertiary is where we have a carbon atom connected to three other carbons. So here we're connected to some carbon another carbon, and another carbon. And for this one, guys, I'm just going to leave those little lines on the carbon blank because it doesn't really matter what they're connected to. 
Right, so we're only looking, by the way, at what our neighbor is, not what our neighbor's neighbor is. So we don't care what's down the line. We just care that we're connected to three there. That would be tertiary. And you can probably figure out where we're going with this. So over here, we're now going to be connected to one, two, three, four carbons. And that's going to be quaternary. So we'll, we'll use this terminology as we go through some of the future chapters because we see that certain, um, certain molecules that have, for example, tertiary kind of descriptions can, can react differently than if they were like a primary, for example. So it's just, just part of vocabulary, essentially. Now, to throw a wrench in things, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this um, later in this chapter, and then all of chapter 5, the whole chapter is based on kind of this idea of isomers. So it turns out that sometimes we can arrange atoms in a molecular formula, okay, in different ways. They can have different connectivities. And when that happens, we get something called isomers. So they're molecules with the same molecular formula that have different Lewis structures. Now what we're going to look at is something called constitutional isomers. Sometimes we call them structural isomers, and then sometimes we're lazy and we just call them isomers. They're molecules with that same formula but with a different connectivity between the atoms. So if we look down here below, both of these molecules have two carbons, right? There's one, two, two here, six H's, right? Three and three gives a six, and three plus one plus one gives a six, and one oxygen. So these have the same um, molecular formulas. Now, um, the molecular formula, though, can give us two different um, shapes, and the shapes actually give rise to different intermolecular forces. So the molecule over here on, on our right has H bonding, and that's going to make this molecule have a higher boiling point. So the boiling point of this turns out to be about 78.5 degrees Celsius. And then the boiling point of this is about negative 24 degrees Celsius. So 100 degree Celsius difference between those two. Now the one thing that I, I want to mention here too is that changing the orientation of your Lewis does not create an isomer. So if we look down here below, here's a CH3 connected to an oxygen and an NH2. But if we just kind of flip that molecule around, you get the same structure. Well, it's kind of like water, guys. So if you took water, drew it like this, and if we flipped it around and drew this, I think we'd all say, Mr. C, these are both water molecules. So rotating it is not going to make a difference. Now, interestingly, the number of isomers grows rapidly with the number of carbon and hydrogen atoms. So, for example, if you look at C4H82, it has over 64 trillion isomers. So we're not obviously going to have to do anything that crazy, but we are going to be asked to draw some isomers out. So let's take a second. Let's do that, and then let's see if we could figure out if we have primary, secondary, tertiary, or quaternary carbons here. So C5H12, it turns out that there's uh, three different ways to draw this. So one way would be to take the structure and draw it out all um, linear. Right? So remember, each one of these bends is a carbon. So there's one carbon here, two, three, four, five. Now as far as identifying these as primary, secondary, tertiary, or quaternary, our CH3 down here at the end, all right, let's put our carbons in for this one, just to clarify this. Now you're going to get really good at this as you go through this chapter, but you need to make sure that you know how many H's are everywhere there. So if we look at that structure for our bond line, we can come down here and we can look at our carbons um, in this and kind of in a partially condensed structure. So this position right here, that carbon's connected to one, so that's primary. This guy's primary too. If we look over here at this carbon, it's connected to one carbon there and to one carbon there, so it's secondary. So these guys are all going to be secondary. That's another secondary. 
and another secondary here. And so that's the first way to draw this thing. The other thing that we can do is we could say, well, let's start off with four carbons, and then let's put off of one of these carbons a CH3. So that's the other arrangement. Now looking at this, the ends are all going to be primary. The CH2s are going to be secondary. And then this guy right here is connected to three carbons, so it, it is going to be tertiary. Now the other thing that we can do here is we can draw this out with three carbons and we could put two substituents here. So then that would give us, if we're looking at this thing, primaries on all the ends. And then this guy in the middle here is a quaternary. And there we have it, guys. Those are your three isomers.